Hello, people of YouTube! My name is Steve Gray, and thank you for watching. Today, we're going to be talking about Yashihime Princess Half Demon Season 2, Episode 19. Only five episodes left, and this episode felt like a massive waste of time. I'm just going to give you that right off the bat and go right to the grim stuff. Before we get into it too far, I just yet again want to let everybody know about the WhatsApp scam that is going around. So typically it's on giveaway videos. You comment something on a giveaway video, someone says, oh, you gotta download WhatsApp, you put in this number, and they try to, you know, get your information, they get your name, your address, your phone number, email, all that fun jazz make it look like they're going to send you something and then say, oh, by the way, it's going to cost you $150 to ship a phone uh, with your Cash App, with your Venmo, with your PayPal. So just be wary of the WhatsApp scam. It is going around. I'm trying to make everybody more aware of it. So let's actually get into the review of this episode. We start off with the girls getting back to the modern era and Kinnamaru uh, being very, very annoyed that he is not able to get through the little space-time portal. A bunch of demons are coming at him. He's fighting them all off. He's trying to, you know, contact his right arm, Mr. Kieran. And it is just not working whatsoever. So we get to the modern era, and we have this nice little family reunion uh, between Toa and her younger sister, her aunts, grandfathers, relatives, all that fun jazz. And we get to see this crazy cat called Biao. And I, and I said his name like Biao, because this cat has the deepest, most masculine voice of any cat I have ever heard in my entire life. Uh, why, they decide, why they decided to go with that particular voice for this cat, I have no idea. I thought that was probably the most hilarious part in this episode. You just see this cute little fluffy cat, a little overweight. Then he comes up and he's just like, no. And you're just like, oh god, <laughs> what, what is wrong with this cat? This cat is a grown man trapped in a cat's body. Somebody help him. So the girls meet up with the family. Uh, her Matoa's mom, or modern day mom, I guess you could say, is having a concert with uh, some sort of pop idol group, you know, think NSYNC, One Direction, Backstreet Boys, something along those lines. They're called the Sixes or something, something like that. And uh, all the demons are, you know, going to be at this concert because apparently a shard of the concert, yeah, shard of the concert, shard of the comet, rather, that is falling. The Grim Comet uh, landed in the concert area. Uh, and that's where all these demons are, you know, con congregating. So we get to see Mr. Kieran go around killing a bunch of demons. Uh, we find out that the reason that the comet is coming there in the first place is because Mr. Kieran is there. So it is actually 100% Kieran Maru's fault. Technically, it's Riku's fault because he's the one that dropped the arm down the well in the first place. Uh, and for Kieran, Mr. Kieran to get to the modern day era, that is the reason that the comet is coming there. So they both have to kill Mr. Kieran and destroy this comet. Um, we actually get to that point where it looks like the girls are about to kill Mr. Kieran, and then, you know, he's, like, super apologetic. He's sorry. He was like, oh, excellent. You know, you guys are going to help me defeat all of these demons. And he just seems like a generally good dude. Uh, but we don't know. You know, we have to wait and see. Um, by the preview that we get from next episode, maybe he's not as good of a dude as we thought. Uh, he does not want Kieran Maru, though, to get to the modern day era. That is what we do know for a fact. Because he thinks that if Kieran Maru gets there, the age of, you know, destruction is going to become upon them. And uh, it, it is just going to be a bad time. So he does not want Kieran Maru getting to the modern day era whatsoever. So the girls just kind of defend off the demons from this little concert hall. And, you know, nothing really big. Just some basic demon battles. You know, it's the, the fighting was alright. You know, not, nothing too fancy. So meanwhile, back in the, uh, the feudal era, I believe it is. Um, we have Riku showing up out of nowhere. That's right, Riku isn't dead. He's good to go. So he shows up. He goes sword to sword with Kirin Maru for a couple of minutes. Uh, uses Madame Scepter, as he calls her, Zero Scepter, to cover Rion in the web, take him from her, and then kind of float away into the distance. So now we don't know what Kirin Maru's plan is. You know, is he going to keep just trying to get through uh, and say, you know, screw it, I'm not going to bother with Rion right now, this is more important to me? Uh, or is his daughter going to be more important to me? So, 
And he's going to go after Riku, trying to get her back uh, really quick while the portal remains open. Uh, personally, I think it is the later. I think he is basically just going to be like, well, I guess we're just not dealing with Rion anymore, and I'm going to get through this portal to kill that comet uh, and be the king of the modern era. At least, my opinion. Anyway, so then we kind of flash back again to the concert hall, still fighting demons, still killing all the demons. Uh, we get to see the concert take place. Uh, the music was kind of meh. You know, it wasn't that great. I thought we were going to get some, you know, some nice uh, Inuyasha theme song in there, which we did not get whatsoever. Uh, they defeat some demons that pop up on stage. They defeat some demons that are around the arena in general. And then we end up on this giant Eiffel Tower looking thing, even though it's not the Eiffel Tower, but the top of this building does. Uh, we see the Grim Comet coming down. Um, we see a bunch of demons coming down as well, you know, just general consensus there. Uh, and all the girls are all like, well, this thing is gargantuan and massive. How am I supposed to do this? Uh, Mr. Kieran says, well, since some of you can fly, you're probably going to have to do this on the ground, uh, which is correct. None of them can fly that we know of, or maybe they're going to learn to fly in the next episode uh, or two. But uh, it's just coming down there on top of this. Mr. Kieran, you know, kind of floats into the distance, and all three of the girls are just ready to uh, destroy this giant comet. Uh, now, I think the biggest thing we have is the Kyokan sword. Um, I feel like that has the ability to take out the comet, but at the same time, if it does, it's going to kill Toa in the process. So we don't really know. We get to see the Demon Slayers next episode. I couldn't tell based on the preview if they, you know, were in the modern era or if they were uh, back at the feudal era. I think it was just the feudal era because we did see, you know, a bunch of demons come out of the portal. Uh, when it was initially open, so they're 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 going to have to de ultimately deal with that nonsense as well. While Toa, Mora, and Setsuna are all trying to destroy this massive comet in the modern day era, uh, the Riva. I think they were calling it the, the Riva era or something along those lines. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Did not care for this episode. I just it felt very fillerish to me. I mean, yeah, it was kind of a setup, but at the same time, it was you know like unnecessary. We could have done more of a heart to heart with the family members. I feel like that would have been nice. Uh, you know, just a little throwback to the first season there. Uh, you know, it's been a long time since you've seen her family. You'd think, you know, they'd have a nice little family reunion, but that really wasn't the case. So, that's where we're at. This one's getting, like, a 6 out of 10. I, I honestly just, from the beginning, I did not care for this episode. Last episode, excellent. Uh, this episode, it, it just feel like we've been going slowly downhill for right now. I mean, I feel like we, we kind of hit that big climax you know, in the season, everybody was dying every two seconds, uh, and now I feel like we're kind of on the we're we're in the resolving action. We're we're in the down spiral. Uh, we do still have five episodes left, so this is probably going to get dragged out. Unfortunately, um, can almost guarantee you the next couple of episodes are just going to be kind of meh, like this one. Uh, you know, we'll get to like episode twenty-three. That's probably where the comet actually gets destroyed. Um, that's my guess, anyway. They'll go back, you know, to the feudal era, uh, all three girls. Maybe Toa will decide to stay. We have no idea. Maybe, you know, Toa and Setsuna will decide to stay in the modern era. Who knows? And then episode 24 will just be like your general kind of wrap-up, and that'll be all she wrote. So I'm hoping the rest of this doesn't just feel kind of dragged out and boring, because this this episode definitely was. It was just, you know, the, the classic formula, okay, here's some random demons we don't care about. Uh, we're killing them. You know, there's there's a threat of danger, but no one actually gets hurt in the process. So, um, yeah. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it is what it is. You, you just got to leave it alone. Uh, six out of ten, as I said. If you're new here, subscribe, notification bell, like, comment, all that jazz down below. Let me know what you want me to do for future anime and cartoon-related videos as well. My name is Steve Gray. Thank you for watching, and as always... Have a good one.